Hi, it's currently like six in the morning and we're going on a field trip to see um, the coastline and how it's changing and the land subsidence and all that good stuff. So I'm going to be taking lots of videos of it. They improve the places from us, the infrastructure, the building, the sanitation, and then the, the fire, uh, kebakaran, the fireworks, uh, then the waste, solid waste also, urban draining, and urban draining also. So they try to improve uh, all of this problem to be not a farm area. Right, right. So this is addressing social justice, yeah, 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 justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this area is being really yeah. affected, and you yeah. can see also yeah. how it's downturned. This is the land, this is the sea, and we have also groundwater level somehow like that, very close to the ground <coughs> earth. This is groundwater, hmm. yeah, sea level. So if this is getting dry. This also is getting rice. I think there is a relationship between the if this is 30, 30, 30 centimeter rice, I think. So that means this will be rice like the double. Rice double. It's always following the morphology. This would be the situation under the normal, normal situation. So you have here the boundary between sea, water and land. And you have here offshore springs. So here, spring. Fresh water coming out. Mm. And if the sea stays like that, they mix here, and you can watch it. Actually, you see a pool. Mm. Uh, salinity levels are different, so this is uh, denser than groundwater. Groundwater gets um, pushed up because it's lighter. And then you see here in the water in the sea, you see areas that have a different temperature because the groundwater temperature is different from the sea temperature. This is fresh, fresh water. So you see here in the sea, uh, maybe a patch with cooler temperature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you ask, why is it cooler all of a sudden away mm. from the coast? It's because of this water, fresh water, <coughs> going up its slider mm. and the uh, salt water stays below it. Mm. When you have, you know, intrusion like this, so the coastline is being pushed inland. So this is the tidal flooding. Now this land is, um, you know, uh, covered by seawater. The seawater won't stay, you know, at the boundary with the land. It will actually infiltrate through pores. But this is um, the weight. I mean, the density is higher, so it will. There is there is a uh, interface. There's a you know um, between the uh, fresh water and the salt water, and it will try to go below the fresh water because it's uh, heavier. heavier, and it will push so the ground water up. So it goes like that. No, it goes like that, mm -hmm. and then this one gets pushed up, up. Mm. and then eventually. Instead of doing like this, it flows. You have the um, a spring here, and that's what you see here. This is low low salinity, mm -hmm. high salinity. Mm -hmm. Low salinity because it's mixed water, tidal flood water with ground water coming up, being pushed up. Uh, it's called seawater intrusion. And it has the effect to salinate the soil. So even if the area is not flooded here somewhere, 
this is maybe not flooded right now, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the groundwater mm -hmm. is getting salty. 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 Yeah, it's already and it's affecting yeah. the soil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even if you don't see this area flooded, you cannot grow certain crops. It's the first sign that something is happening. There is a whole delta, some lines, you know, mm -hmm. showing the pollination of the delta. So you cannot see anything here. Yeah, so, you know, there's no delta here. Yeah. You know, delta, they have a function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're not there because they they look nice and beautiful, but no, but they yeah. really have they a function, function. Uh, to um, sort of control the budget, the sedimentary budget. So Perfect. you have some deltas over there, normally, but here, where we are, uh, no more deltas. No deltas. So there are no deltas. They are nice. So I, I think because human impacts are already fixed, the course, <coughs> and you have changed the distribution of the sediment. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Then that's why when we were there last two years, we were talking about that. We have to go back to the historical map to see where was the locations of the deltas. Because when I see that, it's very linear. And then this is linear as well. So this is not natural. So you have problems. Yeah, you have to go back to where was the coastline. Yeah. Does this make sense? Because he's raising a valid point. Yeah. Compared with the rest of Cimarron, the yeah. post what he was shooting, yeah. this looks like, you know, like completely man made. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Lot of consequences. Yeah. The main sediment are going, are going to these deltas, so you are living here, and there is another delta. So in this part, something happened. Yeah. So you can see that there is like a bay. And in this bay, you have the wave directions are going to where the coast. And maybe we have to look about the season, the monsoon, maybe it can change a bit sometime. But there is a long term, long -term drift. And we can observe that here, because when you block right. with the harbor here, second one here, third one, you change the, the distribution the of the sediment. <coughs> so, so, uh, so, so, uh, you, you, you have probably to, this one is, is growing a bit, but thanks to this one, or because of this one, you have a big erosion over there now, and you are doing the same thing here again and again. So it's like you, 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 human people are displacing or shifting the problem everywhere. So shifting it to the next to the neighbor. And I'm quite sure that we have to, to fix because with the mangrove, you can catch the city. Mm. Even come from the sea. Because forget as well that all the sediment come from the land, come from the land and the sea, specifically in Java Okay. This is the coastal side here? Yeah, the, the sea is over there. So, so we can see it. Yeah. <laughs> So after they, they, do they plant them here? Yeah, this is like a farm and nursery. Do they move them over there or is that just another place where they... Maybe, they move them. Yes, move them. They move yes, them. They move them. But but this they have is to be like strong enough. Strong enough to nurse them. Yeah. And they don't move healthy. They have so to they experiment have... with different species. Okay. And they also are growing many varieties. Many varieties. Because growing one is not good in conditions like this because you never know which species will survive. They have different real impact due to water content and stuff. It's a lot of uh, work. Yeah. I've tried planting paddy in my lifetime. I wanted to plant a mango. <laughs> it is so hard. Yeah. Because you have to stand in four foot of mud. Mud up to your knees. Planted. And then it does it like? And it requires a lot of dirty work because you really literally have to be dirty. And then not, it's not always successful. It's so then it's. But that's the reason they kept it enclosed, right? Because mm -hmm. they're trying to protect and make it grow. I think beyond a certain point, it's okay. It's alright. 
So this is the entire thing is planted and these are five to ten years. And then on the other side of this, is it just the ocean? Yes. Yes. Hello guys, I'm Aprilia de Pusita. You can call me April. So in here now we are in Pakalongan, one of sub district in central Java. And now as long as you can see, there's a mangrove forest forest behind me. Is that <laughs> just on the side of the road and this is where like the ocean like how close it is to the ocean and it's not even high tide yet so they said every day this area just gets completely flooded because the ocean is coming up onto the land waste water treatment plant from the uh, city no? city city, city. 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 department this is the if you wanted to go in, you can see. Yeah. Okay. So from every single batik place via pipeline, currently uh, all the you know the the water, the batik contaminated water comes into this. Uh, uh, yeah, like a container or yeah. water collector. In this town. In this town. Yeah. Right. Collector. Is there something that like? mixes it, filters out the waste. Yeah. Uh, they pump it into the big big tank. Big tank okay. over there. And then they process it again to shoot the spirit. Uh -huh. And then they move it to the purple one. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, the purple okay. tank. Okay. And these kids are very excited. <laughs> For the big tank. And then that's the last step, which is like the natural filter, and then it just goes off into the rivers. What is this like the wastewater that yes after you wash the bucket those are the places where those two stamps or where you would fix the cloths right and then you would uh, have a design and certain things are bad certain things have already been done over so the whole thing is bad and the print on top is the color they have already finished this piece mm. then they have to remove the wax when did you make this? Many years ago, when I was a student in my 20s. In okay. India, I learned how to make Oh. You have to hand draw it. Wow. And can and you like it. make the prints or do you hand draw the entire thing? Oh, I hand draw the entire thing. Wow. I didn't have all these prints. Wow. That's a lot of yeah. it's it's a, lot a lot of work. A lot of work, but it's sold. Mm. I could sell it like for hundreds of dollars. Hi, so I just got out of like a meeting with one of my professors on the BU side of this um, just to kind of talk about like where I am with my research project and kind of like what's expected of me and the challenges that I've been having, which um, I kind of talked about this morning in our morning meeting that we have every day, but I like think I need to have a bit more of an in-depth conversation more than just like a 10 minute thing. And I really got a lot out of it because I think coming into this, I didn't realize how like I thought my expectations just needed to be tailored and so yesterday I had a pretty frustrating day I would say because I didn't feel like I was getting anywhere in terms of my research and like actually establishing a project and like getting professors to talk to me about 
like actually doing research instead of just telling me about what they do or like something that they've done before as if I'm a student as if I have like no experience and don't actually do research so that was like pretty frustrating for me but I think like now I after talking to her I think I realized more like we're here for the learning experience and so I shouldn't get so caught up in or I shouldn't let myself get frustrated because I'm not doing what I expected to do because here like you can't it, it's a completely different country and they have completely different customs and expectations and standards and barriers in terms of research and so undergraduate students here don't really do research um, in the sense that you would in America um, so that's something that I like just needed to tailor my expectations to because I and I also thought that it was expected of me to have something done by the end of this to have like I thought that it was expected of me to come into this like meet with the professors to sit down with them and talk about what I'm going to be doing and then with it within a few like days or maybe after the first week having like concrete plans for going forward for the next five weeks and then spending the rest of my time here doing the research collecting or like not collecting data but analyzing the data that they already have because we yeah and um basically like doing what i would have done at home but in indonesia and it's not like that so um they really just want us to get the experience of having to work with people in a different country and having to experience these like challenges so it's not really like I'm expected to have something like com like a full six weeks project completed by the end of this so when I said in my the last video that it would have been beneficial if we could communicate with them beforehand so that we could be like on the ground running it was kind of like based on that expectation of like I needed to have something done by the end of the six weeks I think it's good for me to know that it's not like I'm failing if I don't have if I'm not exactly where I like I expected myself to be going into this um yeah I think like a big problem that I'm having is just communicating with the professors because sometimes I feel like we're talking past each other where I know what I want to do and they know what they want to teach me but I can't I don't know how to communicate to them that like I have background knowledge in this already and I don't need them to teach me about it. I just want to get going um, because they're just not used to that and they don't really know how to answer my questions. So I just need to be better at asking them in a different, more productive way. Like, I don't know how, <laughs> that's what I had to figure out. But now I, I know like after talking to my professor on the B side, like it's okay and we can just go with how things are going and I'll be okay. And so really, I just need to be less uptight <laughs> and relax a little bit. So yeah. Hi, so sorry if the lighting is a little bit dark in here, but it's Friday night and I just kind of wanted to come in and update on where I am with my research project at the end of the second week. So. To be honest, this week was like really frustratingly unproductive for me. Um, going into it, I thought I had a research project idea and then early on in the week, like Monday or Tuesday, I kind of didn't have an idea at all of what I was going to do. And so I wasn't really able to get pretty much anything done this week because the people who are supposed to be mentoring me left town for the week. Um, and I didn't have anything to do and I can't just make up a project by myself when I don't have the people who I'm supposed to be working with to guide me through it and tell me what's possible and what's feasible and what they're doing. And so that was all a little bit frustrating to me. And I think there was just a little bit of miscommunication on, on both parts of like what's expected of me out of this program, what's expected out of our mentors for what they're supposed to give us to do and how much like responsibility they're supposed to have over us. So I'm not quite sure where that went wrong. And also for me, it was a little bit frustrating because um, I feel like I was falling behind because everyone else in our group kind of had, was like starting to gain traction on their projects this week. Um, and they were starting to go like do field work and go on surveys and all this stuff. And I was just kind of like, I don't have anyone to work with or anything to do. And it was really stressful. Um, 
but I wanted to wait until today to film this update of where I am on my project because I knew things were gonna, gonna change. Um, so my professor who I'm working with came back today and I had the chance to sit down with her and um, talk with some of her students about what I can do. And so it looks like I will be using some of my previous photo mosaic knowledge from when I was working in a lab back at Boston University. Um, and I'm gonna be analyzing photo transects um, and looking at percent coverage of corals, tunicates, algae, and anything else that's living in there. Um, but yeah, just this entire week has been kind of like really slow going and frustrating for me. Um, but I kind of learned, there's two things that I really learned out of this week. One is that it's okay to, to, to be frustrated, but it's not gonna get you anywhere. So just relax and just do the best you can with what you have. Talk to the people that you can. And if things don't go according to plan, that's okay. You just have to adapt and react. And that's just how it's gonna be. Because being upset about something and being angry and being frustrated over something you don't have any control over is not gonna get you anywhere. Um, so that's one big thing that I learned this week. And the other thing that I learned about myself is that I have a fear of failure. And it's like pretty, pretty strong, I would say, how my fear of failure is. And I kind of like already knew this about myself, but it really hit home this week because I was like, I'm not going to be able to get anything out of this um, in terms of being able to produce something for NSF or for my school or for whatever they expected out of me. And I was like really upset that I they were going to think that I failed on my part and that I wasn't being, I wasn't able to come out of this with something that would be helpful for them because I was having all these problems getting started on my project. And I've always been the kind of person where it's like, if I'm not at the top of my game all the time, then I'm falling behind and I won't be able to catch up. And so I think that like me feeling like I'm failing and like being scared of that and being like, there is no second option. Like it's either I do it right the first time or I fall behind and fail miserably and that's the end of the world. I think this week has definitely taught me a little lesson in getting over that and just being okay with not, with having to change your expectations or not being able to do what you originally set out to do. And that's fine. Like that's, that's just a lesson that I needed to learn. And I think that's really good. That's definitely something that I've gotten out of this trip so far is a lot of life lessons and a lot of things that I needed to learn and a lot of hard truths and learning about myself and the people around me. And um, yeah, I, th I think going into the third week now, um, I have some sort of a project that I'm gonna be doing. At least I have something to work on, a gateway into making it more. Um, and yeah, so this weekend and next video, we're going to Yogyakarta. Um, I wanted to see the big temples, but it's really expensive to get into them and to get to them from our hotel. So I don't think I'm gonna be doing that, but still I get to see like the resort and the other side of the island and maybe go to a beach and just explore a different city in Java, Indonesia. And so that's gonna be really exciting. And then I'm also gonna be documenting how my research project progresses, obviously, because that's kind of the point of this, like how my research project progresses going into the third week, which is also at the end of this week, it's gonna be halfway through this trip, which I can't believe in this, like, I can't believe it's been almost halfway. And I also can't believe it's only halfway. I'm kind of in that feeling at this point. Um, but yeah, so that's coming next time. And I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I know I haven't really said much about my project, but to be honest, like, there hasn't really been much to say. Um, so hopefully going forward, there will be more. Fingers crossed. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for watching. Bye.